Hello and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel. We're here doing another ship review. There's a whole pack of alternate rig cards that let you play the existing ships in a new way. And today we're going to look at the Sloop of War alternate rig for the Brigantine model. I'm Joseph and I'm joined by... Hi. And Dan. The Sloop of War is an unrated warship that has a single deck of cannons, but is smaller than a frigate. In Blood and Thunder, it's a three-deck ship, and it costs 17 points. The Sloop of War's max speed is 5. It has sail settings at 5 inches, 4 inches, 2 inches, and 0. And anchored. Its windward value is negative 2, and it has a turn value of 3. The Sloop of War has a hull fortitude of 4, and a hull integrity of 6. It takes 18 hits to drop this ship to 1 fortitude. The rigging of the Sloop of War has fortitude 3 and integrity 5. The ship's draft is 6. The Sloop of War's front deck can hold up to 17 models. The main deck can hold up to 20, and the rear deck can hold up to 19 models. This ship's middle deck, or main deck, can hold two pairs of light or medium cannons, and its rear deck can hold two pairs of light or medium cannons as well, meaning this ship is a 8-gun ship. The Sloop of War may also have six swivel guns, four being in the forecastle and two being on the rear deck or poop deck. The Sloop of War has the traits stay sails, sweeps two, and square sails. The ship can also uh, purchase the fighting top, a fighting top uh, for two points on its main mast, and the shallow draft trait for three points. So why take the Sloop of War rather than a Brigantine? It's got faster speed and the ability to take a singular fighting top, which gives you, at least in smaller games where I feel like this is intended, more of an advantage. It's definitely faster, more maneuverable than the Brigantine, in my opinion, but it also has a couple blatant downsides. It's a very different ship than the Brigantine. The Brigantine has that big, what is it called a gaff sail? I forget. Yeah, a gaff sail. These are all square sails. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of like a slightly downgraded frigate, in my opinion. It has that five speed windward minus two stay sails combination that is very frigatey. I really like this ship. I think it's strong. It's definitely not as strong on the cannons, but if you want a tough ship that can go fast, that's not as expensive and not as large as a frigate, this is a really good option, in my opinion. I really like this ship as well. That integrity of six. Uh, means that it takes a lot of cannon to chew through the deck of this ship. I want to say also that this ship is at the same point level as another alternative rig, which is the Merchant Frigate, which is also 17 points. Uh, Brigantine has the four swivel guns in the front in the forecastle. That is a great boon for most boring lists or even... Just any list, having those 12 swivel dice is a lot of fun. Those are murderous, yeah. It's a good aggressive ship when you have those four swivels in front, because you can sail straight at somebody, punch them in the face, and then board them. Yeah, I will agree. It's a very aggressive ship. Its only real downsides is the square sails rule can make tacking a little difficult, and it's got a worse windward setting. So whereas the brig can sail into the wind a little bit, you don't want to do it, but it can. This, you really don't want to. You slow to a crawl. Yeah, three inches is less fun. But almost all the ships with the five speed have that three inch uh, windward speed. This will be a fun ship to apply some of the sailing upgrades or ship rigging upgrades from that are going to be coming to us and raise the black, which I'm not going to say too much about here. But there'll be some upgrades that might make this even more dangerous. To the point even where I would say the question is, why take a standard brigantine when you can take a sloop of war? We talk about maneuverability. I think the sloop of the brigantine is slightly more maneuverable, but sometimes speed is better than maneuverability. This has a turn of three. Yeah, it's the, the brigantine also has a turn of three. Why does the brigantine exist? Some people like the brigantine. It was my second ship that I ever bought, and I did it in a day. I had the day off of work, so I, I had primed it the night before. So I primed it, painted it, rigged it, the whole thing. A nice little one-day project. And it served me pretty well. 
it's good to have, you know, when you're someone like me who tends to, you know, invite people over to play, have more than one ship to play with. And while a Brigantine and a Light Frigate are not evenly matched, in a specific point game, you can make the Brigantine a little better equipped than the Light Frigate with the points available. Using the hybrid rig rule of the Brigantine, you uh, actually get an advantage tacking. Well, this has a penalty tacking, too, so this could get away by going upwind better than uh, the brigantine can compared to the sloop of war so there are some maneuverability points with the brigantine brigantine is one of the most often used pirate ships is my understanding but this is more of a warship rather than a pirate ship yes it is and it it really shows it with that speed and deadliness and that whole integrity too yeah and which is just as much as the merchant Pretty good as well. Right. I've used this in a campaign. I was the pirate hunters in a campaign. I used the sloop of war almost most of the time. And I had good luck with it. I thought it was a really good ship. The fun. When you buy the brigantine, you have to either get another rigging pack to get some extra dowels or kind of jury rig your own by a dowel of the right diameter and just use a string or something to tie the mass together. And the card is only available in this pack of cards that Firelock now sells, but the stats are also in No Peace Beyond the Line. What I did is I used the spar and rigging attachments from the bark and hung my bark spars and sails and just used the rigging things on my Sloop of War. Nice. So that about covers the Sloop of War, though. It's good. Play it. Yeah, if you can't afford a light frigate, this will do just fine. Not a whole lot to say. That's a good ship. For more ship overviews, you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out our articles there. I think we cover the Sloop of War. We touch on it in our Brigantine article, I believe. We have articles on all sorts of things related to Blood and Plunder. Nation reviews, faction reviews, painting guides, battle reports, terrain articles. Go check it out on the blog. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. And as always, keep your dice ready in the wind at your back, yar-har.